Hi folks, Scarlett here. I've noticed a few people stating recently that they would use the same application method of thermal paste on their GPU that they would use on their CPU. Um, personally, I suggest spreading the thermal paste instead of doing like the piece size or a line. And the reason I say that is with a GPU die, you want to verify 100% full coverage. Um, if you miss a small corner or something like that, you run the risk that you'll start getting black screens or something like that. With a CPU, each core, say that it was an eight core and had four across the top, four across the bottom, and then it's memory controller, each core is gonna have its own um, thermal sensor. That way that you can monitor the temperatures. With a GPU, there's thousands of little parts in here, but there's only one thermal sensor, and wherever it is placed, I'm pretty sure it's right in the middle, wherever it's placed, you're only getting one reading. You're not gonna know if the edges are, un are uncovered. So, with this GPU, um, I've removed the IO shield off the end. That way it doesn't interfere with the cooler and when I'm trying to install it. And you'll notice I've also removed the mid plate that comes with EVGA coolers. Um, this GPU is dead. It's like 100% missing a section of PCB down here. So don't worry about um, like cleaning and stuff like that. Um, in this video, I will go over using the P size method. I almost dropped the thermal paste just now. Um, Personally, I prefer Arctic MX4. Um, use whatever you want, um, but just make sure that if it's conductive or capacitive that it doesn't get on the small capacitors on the outside. Uh, Arctic Silver MX5, not MX5, Arctic Silver 5, excuse me, is capacitive. So if it gets on there, it'll actually cause you black screens and stuff like that as well. Easy to clean off. Um, easier to just avoid getting it on those um, components. Um, if you're using liquid metal, obviously you want to use very little and just make sure that the, the die itself is covered and a small section of the cooler. So currently we have a uh, pea size method or grain of rice, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to move this out of the way and put the cooler here and then we'll turn it over and set it here. I'm going to try and get good contact. Um, Previously, I was trying to make the video and I didn't want to use the screws. So the psychologist pushed down on it and I realized that every single application was bad. Um, they all turned out bad. So the only way to actually show this properly is to install the screws. So I had to go find the screws for this GPU and make sure that this video makes sense to folks. Um, right before I started the video, I actually tore the uh, sticker off the back of it because it was already loose. The old uh, EVGA GPUs used to lose their stickers all the time. They've recently fixed that and they have a lot nicer serial number stickers that go on the back plates and over by the IO bracket on the other side of the card. So just filler talk while I screw these down, obviously. With the GPU screws, um, usually you're going to have the, the spring screws right around the actual core. Um, whenever you tighten them, they don't need to be super tight. They're going to stop at some point. Just go finger tight until they stop. You don't need to wrench them down any further than that. So, pull the screws off real quick. And see how the application looks on this one. I've done it quite a few times, and some of them turned out great. Some of them turned out terrible. Um, anytime I did it without using the screws it turned out terrible. That's why I decided to do it with. So this is a pretty good example here. Um, the cooler side, you can see it a little bit, but whenever you look at the die, you can actually see it a little bit better. You'll notice that the corner here, here, and even a little tiny spot right there, which this little tiny spot probably wouldn't have any problems, but here, there's components close to this area. So if these start to overheat and the thermal sensors here, you're never gonna know that these are overheating. Um, this is one of the reasons, and like I said, I've done this many times today, that I personally don't use the P-Size method with my GPUs. Um, with CPUs, it's a lot easier to do because you have that diffusion barrier of the IHS and the thermal material that goes between the IHS and the die, as well as the IHS and the cooler. Um, personally, with my GPUs, and like I said, I'm not going to worry about cleaning it perfectly, I prefer to do a line of thermal paste across the top here. 
like so. And yes, it uses a lot, but I am trying to verify 100% full coverage. Um, you can use like a hotel room key or something like that. I have an old credit card that I use here. And I just put the line across the top, push around just a little bit, make sure that it gets all the way to the edge. Then you do a flat surface and just draw it all the way down across. Happy little trees, right? Do it Bob Ross style. Get good coverage. And you get a nice even surface across the entire uh, GPU tie like that. Now it may take a couple of times of actually drawing it down to get it to cover fully because the GPU paste or the thermal paste may spread out a little bit as it's going. Um, not a big deal. Just make sure that you have full coverage around the entire die. Then we'll take and place this back on. Um, it seems that each time I do this, um, whenever I do the pea size method and I install the cooler, that the cooler seems a little bit wobbly. But one thing I've noticed whenever I do the spread method where I spread it myself is that it's pretty much like a vacuum when you try to pull the uh, cooler off of the die. It holds very well. Um, and that makes me feel like it's, it's getting a lot better contact personally, but that may not mean much to anyone else. So again, just go until they're finger tight. You don't need to, to wrench them down after that. So finger tight, verify everything's good. Loosen them all a little bit, and then I'll go ahead and remove them. Put the screws back where they belong. Skew that noise, sorry about that. Butterfingers can't grab that thing. So this is where I was talking about it pops off. So you can see a lot better die coverage. And you could probably use less normal paste than I used on that application there. But you'll notice it spread out a little bit around the die, which doesn't cause a problem because it's non-conductive thermal material. Um, I use um, Arctic MX4, and I've used um, MX5 in the past. I've used Thermal Take, and I've used quite a few different um, types of thermal paste, but I just prefer MX4 because it just seems very easy to work with. Um, for cleaning, one thing I always do for cleaning is I like my GPUs to look really pretty if I'm going to take a picture of them. And to me, it doesn't look pretty if there's thermal paste all the way around the die like that. Um, I was watching a Gamers Nexus video and it made me think about this. Um, with these little capacitors around the die, you want to be really careful. You don't want to break those off. And Steve from Gamers Nexus is saying, you know, make sure you don't like use your fingernail to try and get in there because you could pop a capacitor off and don't use a toothpick because you may miss, you know, don't use a screwdriver because while you can get in there, you may damage something or chip one of the capacitors. Um, the most useful thing that I have found whenever it comes to cleaning is a toothbrush. So I used it a minute ago, so it's a little bit wet from the Arctic Clean that I used. Um, but I just get a good wipe down and then just put the excess thermal paste from the toothbrush onto a paper towel and give it a few good wipes and it looks like a mess right now just because I used the Arctic Clean um, on an earlier video. But you can give it a real quick wipe down and remove a lot of excess thermal paste that was on there without risking damaging any of the capacitors around the die. So, makes it a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner, if you just want to like take a picture or something like that. If you have an old toothbrush that you're not using anymore, grab it and just use it for cleaning your PCB and all sorts of different things. Um, to me, it makes it look a lot better. A lot cleaner and you can also see if there's any problems with any of the capacitors underneath so that was my video on 
um, how I would do the thermal application and why I don't suggest personally using the uh, the P method with the dye here. Um, like you saw earlier, it didn't quite get 100% coverage. Um, and that means that you could start getting black screens and even some shutdowns, and it would be an unexplained reason. So if you've ever reapplied your thermal paste, I would highly suggest just giving that a try real quick and see if that works. Um, if it works for you and you get full coverage, that's great. Um, if you check it and you realize that you didn't have full coverage, maybe try doing the application method where you draw it down while using a thick line. That way that you can verify 100% before you put the cooler on that the dye is covered. Um, the GPU dye is very sensitive to heat. So the more heat we can dissipate, the better it's going to work. All right, that is the end of my video. I hope you have a great day and thank you for your time.